All right. Well, call to order. Welcome to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. It's a regular meeting for Thursday, April 16th, 2020. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And disappear. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, America, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands. one nation Nation's under God, God. Indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. All right, so planning board members present tonight. We have uh, Frank Underwood, we have Sean Winston, and we have Nicole, also uh, Mike LaRue. We have our uh, town planner here, Lee, uh, Lee J, and we also have James on board here. Uh, moving on to uh, the approval of the minutes for, uh, oh, first off, James, do you have any public comment that came in via email? I have no uh, public comments, just comments for the uh, public hearing that's coming up. Right, okay. So if anybody has any public comments who's watching at home uh, later on in the meeting, just before we adjourn, we're gonna have another public comment session. So you can email uh, planning at berwickmain.org if you've got anything that uh, for the public hearing or for the public comment session. So. Uh, moving on to the approval of minutes for the March 5th, 2020 meeting. We had uh, not acted on these because we were waiting on a couple changes to the minutes. James, you want to talk about the, those minutes, what you changed? Yeah, the question was whether or not uh, Pond Road was found complete. I went back to the video and confirmed that Mike LaRue uh, motioned to find it complete. It was seconded by Frank Underwood. Okay. Anybody else have anything on these minutes? So if we do an approval of these, since we didn't act on them last time, it wouldn't be as amended. It would just be approval of the minutes. Frank, is, Frank you got to turn your microphone on. I got it, Lauren. Am I unmuted? There you go, now? Frank. Somebody muted. Yes, me. we can hear you. Uh, did, did you get a motion for the March fifth minutes? No. I'll make that motion. I see that the uh, uh, James, as he spoke, had mentioned uh, uh, the correction that we added. I'll second. We have a motion and seconded by Sean. So we have a motion by Frank, seconded by Sean. Further discussion. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Mike. Yes. Uh, Frank? Yes. Sean? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And I vote yes, so that is five nothing. All right, so moving on to the minutes for the March 19th, 2020 meeting. That's actually April 2nd. The March 19th was canceled, if you remember. I'm sorry, so April, yeah, I'm looking at, I am looking at that right now, April 2nd. Thank you. Sorry about that. We already have a typo, James. Uh, I have a question when uh, you're ready for it. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Frank. Um, I noticed that when we talked about that, we had two things in the finding of fact that had to be addressed. One was um, article two about the landscaping and we were going to add in there the trees, shrubs, fencing, screening, and the, and the like. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking about the findings of fact um, on, uh, let, let me back up just for a second. Silver therapeutics? No. Yes. Yeah, silver therapeutic. If you remember when we approved that, we approved the findings of fact as amended. And when we amended it, we added the our, the paragraph two text associated with tree shrubs and screening. And then again, down under paragraph 17, we added that it was in fact connected to the sewer district, that it was not on a septic system. My question is, I just wanna know where do I find that corrected amended finding of facts? Cause I went back to the old packet and looked it up and it had not been addressed. So. 
I want to just make sure we get that findings of fact as amended, typed out and in the folder, the file folder. That was my only Frank, concern. Frank, I took care of that the very next day and shipped them out. So they should I, be floating around find, somewhere. Where do we, where do we find that? To read I'll that? just, um, I can, I'll make them available and then just ongoing, they'll be right forward email to you after I look at them. I'm not, question, I'm not questioning whether they were done. I just wanted to know that they were done. And in fact, where are they? Because you can't find a copy of that as amended. Is that in, um, in this packet for tonight's meeting somewhere? It was, it was actually back in the March, in the March 5th packet. Here. And it was originally you should together. find it. You should find it under the findings of fact regarding the landscaping under number two, preserve and enhance the landscaping. And then the sewer piece was much further down. I want to say it's like seven, 17. I want to say 17, but yeah. yeah it so should, it I, should restated, restated in 17. So I, I the have area. them. They have not been shared since, they, since they've been amended. That's okay. That's what my question is. I, we've not had a chance to read them because James hasn't, shared them as you had modified the text, Lee J. Just want to make sure you know that I did my job. I don't doubt that. Does anybody have anything else on the approval of minutes for the April 2nd, 2020 meeting? I'll make a motion. We accept the minutes for the April 22nd meeting. I mean, April 2nd meeting. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Frank and then we have a motion or uh, a seconded by Nicole. Further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Mike. I'm abstaining, I wasn't there. Okay, uh, Frank. Frank, we're looking for a vote. Seems I lost you there. No, nope. now, you, now you're off, turn it back on. He's muted again. Frank, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, Nicole? Yes. <laughs> John? Yes. And I vote yes. So that is four zero with one uh, abstaining. All right, moving on to the public hearing, a site plan review, funeral home, Cemetery Road, uh, Map R30, uh, excuse me, map R36 or lot R36, uh, lot 46. It's in the R2 zone. It's the Lang Bibber Funeral Home. And James, are you getting any emails coming in? I got one email from um, the abutter on 66 Cemetery Road. He asked, um, he said there is a right of way to the Mitchell farm that is supposedly uh, goes through the parking lot building location. Has this issue been resolved? Um, and just get a, give us a second. We have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We got 15 people in the waiting room. Um, and I got just got to consult with Terry for a minute on who we let in for the public hearing just to make sure we're letting in um, the right folks. Um, I think with a, we can we can let uh, Jeff in, and then that can buy us some time because he'll go over the application. So let me let me consult with Terry. We'll let Jeff in, and then uh, let the rest of the butters in. If that that works for you, Dave. Yeah, that's fine. Hello, Jeff. Jeff, you're on mute. Hey guys, can you hear me? Hello there, can you hear me? This is Jeff. We can hear you, Jeff, we can hear you. Jeff, you're still on mute. Okay. All right, there you go. Jeff, you just wanna talk a little bit about the application. Sure, I can start off like that. Um, so what we have here is a 
project on Cemetery Road. It's an undeveloped lot that we're uh, looking to construct a 6,000 square foot single story building for the uh, Bibber Funeral Home and Chapel. Um, access will be off of two access points on the Cemetery Road. We have provisions on the plans for stormwater controls. Uh, due to the size of the project, we went and um, submitted a permit to the main DEP for a stormwater PBR uh, where they look at erosion control me measures and we also submitted to the town a stormwater maintenance plan and a stormwater report that controls stormwater uh, that indicates how we're going to control the stormwater as it leaves the developed property. Um, we had our site walk today where we looked at uh, the placement of the building, the discussions about where the septic system uh, will be located. Uh, that hasn't been finalized yet, but we've got a couple good locations and um, the overall general uh, site layout of the property. Um, usage will be an, uh, uh, as an on-demand system that will um, accommodate the users of the building. We also have in the proposal a caretaker's apartment in there. Um, what they have at other uh, facilities in Southern Maine is that they'll have, um, usually it's a, uh, an, an older person that lives there takes care of and keeps an eye on the property when it's not used uh, during um, services. And uh, that's really about it. I, I can ask a lot of questions or answer a lot of questions as opposed to doing a monologue. Okay, so James, I'll turn it over to you. I know you're on the phone right now. If I might, Mr. Chairman. Whoever speaks, we'll just write the questions down, and then once we get into uh, once we get into your site plan review, we'll ask you the questions and then have you answer them, Jeff. That's perfect. All right, what do you got, James? So I'm on the phone right now with an abutter, and uh, let me grab a question from him if he has any outstanding questions. So I'm playing the role as a radio producer. I feel like right now. So do you um, have anybody on waiting in the waiting room to get on here for the uh, public hearing? So everyone um, that I'm aware of in the waiting room is either for the Pond Road subdivision or for the um, 569 Portland Street project. Okay. okay. You're going to take that question? Yep. Okay. Thank you. We need a commercial break for, for these. Um, so from John and Lisa Lapierre, um, so there was a, I mean, we had that we changed the question, a process question, but let's, we'll stick with the application. So will the zoning for all of Cemetery Road be changed to allow business? There was another resident who was gonna call in who was told he could not have a business because it was in a rural zone. If we wanted to open a business on our property, would that be allowed? We have a serious concern about the road and parking. The road is not in good shape now. And obviously this would add to that. There's a question on overflow parking. There is no on-street parking available. This could be very dangerous for local residents that live on the road. We feel it is inappropriate during this time when the governor had issued a stay at home order for this to be happening. It is unfair to the residents of Berwick that are not Techno technologically inclined, respectfully submitted. Okay. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to address those questions now or wait until we get into the, the state we'll review? Wait until we get into the uh, old business, yeah. Okay. James, anybody else? That, that is it. I, didn't re I did not receive any letters ahead of time or have not received any emails. All right, James, you had mentioned this week about possibly keeping this public hearing open. I think um, in terms of if um, we feel like there isn't a complete resolution for any of these uh, applications or um, like we do have a couple numbers in the waiting room where it's probably um, the intent was for folks to reach out beforehand to um, express that they wanna be part of the meeting. Um, we have three, like I said, three names in the waiting room where we don't, we're not sure what, who they are and to avoid being 
you know, Zoom bombed or um, anything else happening for security concerns, um, perhaps it's better to let them stay in the waiting room. And then for that, um, to keep the public hearing open, um, it, that's really could be the fairest thing we could do. <clears throat> well, can we, how about this, to verify that they live in Berwick, can we ask them where they live? So they just showed up in the Zoom waiting room and there's no, we really can't communicate with them other than letting them in. So. If if they you can block them once they come in if they're not for the correct agenda item correct. Yeah, I mean we can we could try. I mean Terry, yeah, let me. Oh boy, <laughs> Dave, can you hear me? Yes, Frank. No, Frank, you're on mute again. Frank, you're on mute. Now? Can you hear yes. Me now? Yes. Okay. Um, in the past, we have left hearings open, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think we need to leave not only this hearing open, but the subsequent one we're going to have on Pond Street because I think, in all fairness, the questions, the only one call I had, it had to do with the process and allowing people adequate time to come in. I wouldn't be participating in this meeting if Linda hadn't come in here and taken the dinosaur and sat him down and made him connect to this and do the test back a while ago. So there are a lot of us out there that aren't comfortable uh, in this format. And where there's a stay at home order and those things along that line, I'm actually going to ask uh, Lee J under the uh, old business section to explain to us some of the options we may have, whether it's suspend the project, the susp uh, table the applications, what do we need to determine that? Um, so I'll, I'll hold that until we get to that point, but we have left these things open in the past and I think it's most appropriate to do it now. All right, James, I saw somebody just join there with the phone. What was that about? So I was thinking, for these unknown people, let them in and kind of let them declare who they are. But I think it's probably too messy at this point. Um, I think for us, it's, it's to really, to, the, the intent, like I said, was to get it, allow people ahead of time to declare that they wanted to be part of this process. Now, um, I understand the, the technology barriers and everything and, and the technology snafus that we kind of hit real time, but People are going to be able, they're going to have two weeks to view this video and they can call in, they can send letters, they can send emails. Um, and at that time, I feel like that's more opportunity to part participate than what typically is granted. Um, they have time to hear planning board deliberation, they hear the um, engineers. So, I mean, that's, that's my recommendation on it. Um, yeah. Because, and I think in most, in most instances we can craft the public hearing notices that please ahead of time let us know that you want to be you want to participate that way we can verify who you are and for for the pond road project we there are only a few people in the waiting room that we don't know who they are the majority of the people we know who they are what's the consensus of the board that we, we should keep this open i think that we should keep this public hearing open at this point. I'm in favor of keeping it open for one more um, meeting, but not this indefinite thing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would say just table planning board meetings in general, because the, the purpose for yeah. us to have these meetings is to continue with business in the anticipation that the world is going to go back to normal and we will have momentum mm -hmm. behind us. We've got a, potentially a lot of applications coming up with downtown. Um, and I don't want to be, you know, we don't want to get bogged and have too much going on. So um, I'm, I'm in favor for one more meeting, keeping them open. That gives people plenty of time um, to figure it out and react. Um, it, and otherwise, no more meetings, I think. I agree with that. I, I agree with Nicole on that. That's if we keep them open indefinitely. The rest of the board feel? We're going to, if we keep them open indefinitely, we're just gonna have a, a backlog of things to do coming down the road. I think keeping it, these open for one more week is fine. 
Mr. Right. Chairman, do you want me to weigh in at this point or shall I wait till we get to that Go ahead. part? Well, part of the part of the issue is 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 I can I, I completely understand what you folks want to do and why you want to do it. The governor's um, or the governor's order, or actually the legislature moved on it, I believe, um, talked about giving planning boards and um, select boards and other public entities the ability to have meetings like we're having them now um, um, and having public view them from away or be able to listen in or be able to comment if they need to comment. So the process that you're using right now is, is absolutely adequate under the emergency relevant to your process within that um, regardless because you are holding meetings or you're holding a meeting um, and you're having a public hearing if you look at your zoning ordinance um, section 9.8 g where it talks about public hearings and i'll also jump down to 9.8 h which is the decision-making process. It says under G, following the filing of a complete application as determined by the planning board, so once you find an application complete, um, a hearing shall be held on the application within 30 days. It doesn't say may, doesn't give you any other options. It says you shall hold that public hearing. The board shall notify the code enforcement officer and the municipal officers at least seven days in advance of the time in place of the hearing and shall publish notice of the hearing at least seven days in advance. James has done that and the way he developed the public hearing notice, if you hadn't seen it, it was in regards and respect to the COVID-19 issue and giving folks the various options that they have to come into this meeting or provide written testimony as, as someone else has also done. Then within 9.8H under your decision process, it says within 30 days of the public hearing, the planning board shall reach a decision. That gives you that one more meeting that you're talking about, but there's nothing within your wording in conditional use or site plan review that allows you to go beyond that point unless it's very specific to any issues that the engineering firm or someone needs to provide answers to you on. And there's a decision by both sides to agree to continue on that Otherwise, it says you shall act on that. It's not a may. Um, so, you know, you do have a little bit of wiggle room, but you can't go beyond the next meeting, if you will, once you hold the public hearing. So, um, you know, you want to you wanna be careful and be definitive and know that if you're going to have a public hearing on an application, that it's going to be somewhat close to being ready for approval unless there's some really big outcry from public opposition that you're going to give the applicant an opportunity to go back and address. Okay, thanks Lee J. James, anything else? James? I just got one more email about um how is the application complete if there is no septic design? Can I answer that or let Lee J answer that? Why don't we wait till we get into old business? Okay. Who is that from, James? That is from John LaPierre, 66 Cemetery Road. So with what? Right. <clears throat> so with I what, think we should keep the uh, public hearing open until the next meeting for two weeks from now. Lee J, can, can you take a question? Can I take? Of course, I can take a question, Frank. Um, if the second thirty days starts after conducting the public hearing, when does that thirty days start? If we continue this one more meeting and then close the hearing at that meeting, does the 30-day time frame start? 
or does it start the, with the fact that we're initiating the public hearing this evening? Um, the way I interpret the wording, it says within 30 days of the public hearing. It doesn't say 30 days after the close of the public hearing. But to so, me, that, the public hearing is when it's closed. So that's why I'm asking whether the 30-day clock I, starts at that point. See, I guess I, I guess I don't interpret it the same way, but that's what ordinances do. They're up for interpretation. It says within 30 days of the public hearing. So the clock has now started because the public hearing is this evening. Right. We're talking 14 days to the next meeting. Correct. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I just... I, if, if nobody has any objections to keeping the public hearing open, we're going to keep it open until uh, the, the next meeting in May. Uh, next on the agenda is site plan review adult use marijuana cultivation facility, 11 Pond Road, map R70, lot 16. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is CAF Realty of Maine. This is a public hearing just to talk about this application only. James? Yep, and we're going to uh, let the... Um... Oh, hold on a second. We can let... Uh, do we want to park Jeff and Patty in the waiting room? <laughs> well, there no. was also still the issue of the septic system. Did we want to address that? No, now? we're going to, we're going to we... address that when we get to old business, oh, but I'm okay. just thinking it's a matter of having all these people on the screen. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the Bibbers and Jeff in a minute. So we're, um, Terry is going to be letting in, um, the abutters right now. We have, I think there's seven. Is it Pond Road? Yep, Pond Road, yep. Um, and once they come in, I, I, I got three really detailed and thoughtful letters and I'll read the, I, I try to condense them down into the, the question parts. Um, for more of the, um, the thoughtful uh, comments they have, I figure they're probably better off saying it themselves. Um, but between the three of them, I have condensed the questions down. Um, so I'll get to those when they're in the room. All right. So Dave is the applicant. Hey, Dave. All right. So we have John, John Webster, you on? So we're going to let seven people in at one time. Yeah, I see butters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to start with David Ayer. Can you hear us? David Ayer, can you hear us? You can take your microphone and off of mute. I can hear you guys. Thank you. Can you hear me now? All right, David Ayer, can you just state your name? Or, or I'm sorry, just state your address for the record. Yes, I can hear you. Can you state your address for the record? Uh, 11 Pond Road. All right, so go ahead. Or do you want my home address in New Hampshire? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Well, my, my home address or the, the property that we are here to consider? Your property address. So, 11 Pond Road. Your mic sounds horrible, by the way. Sorry about that. No problem. <clears throat> Did you guys I'm sorry. Are you... Are you what is, your, what is your current address? Uh, 11 Pond Road. Okay, so you're the applicant. So can you just put yourself back on mute, please? You got it. <laughs> All right, we're going to go next. This is uh, very unstable here right now. Um, Stacy Bellabona. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you just state your name for the record? Sure. For the record, my name is Stacy Bellabana. And I'm here. Um, um, uh, Dave Ayer is a client of mine. Okay, thank you. 
Um, all right, so let's see. Let's go to, and I think Heidi Lavalle, is that, is that an app? That's an applicant. Uh, so then let's go to, if you, Stacey, if you could just put your microphone back on mute. Sure. Um, let's go to Jerry's iPad. Who's on Jerry's iPad? Where did Jerry's iPad go? Jerry's iPad, can you hear us? Can I just take it off of mute? Okay, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Can you just state your name and address? Okay, this is Jerry and Allison Graybill. We live at 10 Pines Road in South Berwick. 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 Okay, can you, uh, you could go ahead. This is a public hearing. Oh, you mean start with our concerns? Yes. Is this my opportunity to yes, speak? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. So, um, Jerry and I are here today to uh, state for the record that we are in opposition of this proposal. Um, I was wondering if people had an opportunity to do the site walk but this form is a little awkward to get answers to that. So maybe that could just be held. Um, so our first um, point that we wanted to make and draw your attention to is on page 10 of the land use ordinance that's titled frontage. And I'll only be reading the first sentence. It says the dimension between the two sidelines of a lot measured along the property line that borders upon whatever way serves as legal access to the lot. So tying that into what we had put in our letter, which is referencing uh, 8.25.3 location, um, where it speaks to where it speaks to marijuana cooperatives and marijuana production facilities are allowed in the the R3 zone only properties, which have frontage on Route 9 or Route 4. So um, if going back to the frontage um, section that I just read, that really speaks to legal access to either Route 9 or Route 4, which as the applicant puts in his proposal, it says that access to this facility will be off of Pond Road. So we did seek advice of counsel and who reviewed these ordinances along with the proposal who have stated that because the entrance of this property is on Pond Road, that it is not in compliance with the land use ordinance. Oh, that's Paul. That's Paul, our neighbor. Answer. Sorry, one of the butters is calling us. He's actually trying to get let into the meeting. All right, this is what let, let, we got to maintain some type of order here. I know this is very difficult. So we have one speaker right now. On right now. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'd like to pause there and just get um, an understanding of why this yeah. pr proposal yeah. is being is, is permitted in light of what I've just stated. Yeah, and you can watch it on TV. It's on TV. All right, now. so what's your, are you done, ma'am? No, I, ha I have more, but I think that's... All right, the then you have to... We have a lot of background noise. You have to ask your husband to just go into the other room. Continue. Yeah, he's back. He's done. Okay, so you tell me, how does this work? You continue to make your comments, and I'm writing your questions down, and then we're going to answer your questions and have the applicant answer your questions. Okay. This is first for me. So I, I need the guidance. Yeah, this, so is, this is the first for me too, doing it this way. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so our other points, I'll walk, I'll walk through our letter then. Um, uh, I'll speak to security. We obviously have a concern on, whoop, sorry, there's someone else in front of me now. Um, we have a concern uh, of the security of having a pot growing facility uh, in our backyard. I think I made a point in the letter that when this went to vote and it was proposed that it be on Route 4 and Route 9, Jerry and I voted against that, knowing that nobody would want this in their backyard. And now we're faced with, um, you know, having a, a farm that is a drug 
being produced just feet away from one of our neighbors and very close to our property. Our property is located across the street. We also looked at the security plan and saw that there's a four foot fence, um, which doesn't really offer much security around that um, property um, and wanted to get a better understanding on um, what better understanding on what security measures would be in place to protect um, all of us as neighbors. Um, another point is in the proposal, it states that this um, preserves and enhances the landscape and design and is compatible with the neighborhood. And we, we disagree that buildings of such large size really doesn't fit in with our residential neighborhood. We realize that it is zoned RC1, but the reality is, is that this, um, pro this um, facility and really compound is being presented within a neighborhood of homes. Um, and obviously that would be hard for anybody who, who would be living um, in a very nice country setting. Uh, the other point that we made is the well water um, and wanted to get a better understanding of how um, the use would affect the water and if veins would be drained, impacting the quality of the water, um, how waste is handled and would that be seeping into the water, the impervious um, materials from the driveway and the traffic of cars from the employees, how that would run off into the, the water and impact the existing tenants, uh, excuse me, the exi existing property owners. I shared in, in the letter that Jerry and I had a uh, well water that had um, deteriorated. Hey, can I stop you for a second? Ma'am, can I stop you for a second? I need to address sure. the board. Terry, can you please put all the, everybody besides the board in, on mute, please? All right, uh, I'm, I'm addressing the board right now. I, I, I'm not comfortable, this, this public hearing is not going very well. I don't know what you think. I, it, this is, we have a lot of people who aren't able to participate. We have a lot of people who are very uncomfortable in this type of setting. The governor's order calls for uh, May 15th. That's two meetings from now. Um, you know, that's, yeah, that's 30 days from now. Um, I, I think we need to really readdress how we're going to do these public hearings. This is this is not comfortable. I don't know what everybody else thinks. And I think that we're not allowing enough people the opportunity to get into these meetings and get their voice heard. And I'm sorry if, it, if it's going to put some people, uh, have to hold them up for 30 days, but I'm not comfortable with this. Let's start with Mike. I agree with you, Dave. I think, I think we should hold off on the stuff until we can actually have a meeting about it. Uh, Frank. Um, I was actually going to ask that, uh, um, the two letters, and I understand it sounds like James has a third letter that's come in, that we get the applicant to respond item by item to each one of those three letters. And then I think once we got that information as, th as the applicant's response, I think it would better set the framework for continuing on with the public meeting. And I agree, it should be a face-to-face -face meeting. Nicole? Agreed, um, especially with the last applicant, um, the last public hearing also. I think that just having these conversations, some people are very confused about just our ordinances in general and their misunderstanding of that as usual is creating more misunderstandings that are um, coming into the public hearing. And it's too confusing to try to teach somebody the land use ordinance and address um, you know, their concerns at a public hearing. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Sean? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't know if it's a case of we table this, uh, but with this large of a group of people that want to speak on a subject, um, into technology is there's some things going on with that and just the number of people is making it uh, pretty difficult. So I would agree to that. So now, unfortunately, because we we started the public hearing, if we end, if 
actually, if we continue the public hearing, that 30-day timeline, that 30-day clock does not start, correct, Lee Jay? Did you mute, Lee Jay? No, I'm, I'm unmuted. I was thinking about this for a second. Um, I mean, I can give you, I, I, I think I've kind of put my position out there as to when that clock starts on this. I think at this point, because of your concerns with it, this might be um, one of those ones where we go to Phil Saucier, the town's attorney, and ask Phil his feeling on it. I, I suspect he'll um, weigh in, in in favor of your position um, and because it's arguable either way and um, suggest that, that the clock does not start ticking. Um, I'm giving you my opinion based on my interpretation of the ordinance. Phil might be a little more conservative and he will probably um, err on the side of your, you know, where you're headed with this. So, um, but I would suggest um, I can certainly craft an email to him tomorrow and ask him um, how the board needs to proceed. I mean, my other fear, besides people not able to get on and get and and be in front of this governing body and ask questions, there's a lot of people who aren't able to do that. This could be, if we approve this, mm -hmm. for even for the applicant, this could be held up, this could be challenged in court because there wasn't due process in getting public comment and it was pushed through the planning board. And that, that would be my concern too, but I, it just is not working that well right now. <clears throat> I mean, hey, I- Go ahead, Lee. I, I, I would, well, I was going to say, you know, you, you need to be fair, if you will, to everybody, but I think the process certainly works better on this to keep things going if there's projects that are not as contentious or have as many questions. I think um, on a project like this, um, you know, you're, it's, it's not one that's just going to go through because everything is easy and hunky-dory and, you know, moving right, right along. So, um, I, you know, I see where you're headed with this and, and I can certainly, like I said, I'll follow up with Phil. Um, I, I don't think the board should, it depends on what we have coming down the line within the applications and James has a better idea of that, but I think there are still things that the board can act on, um, over the next two meetings until this, hopefully this thing. Kind I agree. Of to pass. And there's no reason that then there's no reason that we can't do a site walk on this application as well. Lee Frank. J. Lee J. Yep. Yep. When you speak to the uh, the attorney, yep. um, could you also inquire the importance of getting a letter from the town of South Berwick, where they are in a butter? and my understanding that they may have uses allowed in their town that may jeopardize that thousand foot radius or however that's worded. So could you inquire of him the proper protocol we should follow as far as an abutting town? Sure, no Thank problem. You. Yep. Anybody else on the board want to weigh in on this? I think that our last meeting went really well because we had stuff um, that wasn't as contentious. So we, and we didn't have to have, we didn't have our public hearings online. So um, I agree with Lee Jay in that there are things that we can do still as a board um, successfully. I think our last meeting ran so well. I had high hopes for this one, but um, yeah, stuff like this where it is contentious and we have a lot of abutters, it, it's, I don't, I don't think this is good and I don't want to set a precedent either. So Dave, I would recommend and I that think that within, we'll... go ahead, Frank. Dave, I, uh, my recommendation would be is when we go back into the group where we're going to click on people and let them back into our, our hearing here, that we actually give some direction. And I, I really think that these abutters that have taken the time to write these letters do warrant a response and that would be one charge we could at least give the applicant when we go back in to say we're holding this off we're seeking a, we're seeking an opinion 
Uh, however, we feel that uh, these three letters need to be addressed verbatim in a response prepared by the applicant and the applicant's engineer. That would be my position I'd like to take. We can address that in old business. Okay. All right, so that's what we're going to do. I mean, we have 30 days to figure out, 30 days, Governor Mills' is, uh, you know, executive order on not having these meetings with more than 10 people. Things can change in 30 days, but I think that for something like this, we can keep this open, this public hearing open. We might even be able to do it at the end of May. Uh, we just, this is, I think that's what we should do, so. Uh -huh. Excuse me, can I, can I say one thing before it gets uh, tabled? Yes. No, no, we're not. I, I didn't say that we're tabling this. I said that we're continuing the public. We're not closing the public hearing. Well, I think my engineer needs to talk uh, and address everybody in my abutters before we close this because uh, there's a lot of misinformation. That they okay, have. We're, not, we're not closing the public hearing and we're going to be discussing your application in old business. This is the, the public hearings to, to, to pose questions that we write down and then they're going to ask. Then we're going to ask you and to respond to those questions. So we still have you coming up on the agenda. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, am I still going to be at the top of the list of the next agenda, the next meeting? I'm sorry? The next meeting that rolls around, am I going to be on the top of that list? That's up to you and that's up to, that's up to you in the planning office whether or not you get on that agenda and where you end up on the list. So do I have to All right, I'm moving on from the I'm going to continue this public hearing. Moving on to old business, site plan review, funeral home, cemetery road map, R36, lot 46. It's in the R2 zone. The applicant is Lang Bibber Funeral Home. Uh, Terry, if you could just if, who are on here who came on for the uh, public hearing, you could go back to channel 98 and watch the rest of the meeting and you could also watch it online through the town's website, but we're gonna be moving on and we're not acting on this application. We're not acting in the public hearing right now. You can watch it at home or online. James? I was just talking to, to Terry. Um, but we had our, we had our, our site walk um, and Lee J, uh, do you wanna cover your memo once the um, cemetery road folks get in here? Sure, I guess I can. Hello there, I'm back. All right. Whenever you're so, ready, um, DJ. Sure, so you want me to go through my memo first and then we'll turn sure. it over to Jeff to uh, do his thing. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, as Jeff mentioned earlier, the project consists of a 5,965 square foot uh, footprint funeral home building on the um, parcel located across from Evergreen Cemetery on Cemetery Road. Um, 5.85 acre lot is situated in the transitional residential R2 zone. Uh, the new building will meet um, both the 50 foot front yard setback and 25 foot side yard and rear yard setbacks. Um, the lot is currently undeveloped uh, wood lot, but I believe at this point they have been doing some clearing out there. Um, it will be 35,284 square feet of new impervious area, approximately 75,000 square feet of disturbed area created as a result of the development. Uh, the project 
did require um, going to Maine DEP for a stormwater um, permit by rule. I believe they have received that permit already from DEP um, as part of um, the requirements and we're going to have a condition on them as well. They have to, <coughs> excuse me, they have to pro provide a um, maintenance, maintenance plan as well as um, a log that would be recorded every time maintenance is done in the pond and we're going to be asking um, the applicant to provide that to the town as well as Maine DEP. Um, the applicant has not requested any waivers um, of the submission. Um, you did do your, your site walk tonight. I did not attend, I apologize. Um, and based on the application in the absence of any public comment um, during the last meeting and review, and you have received comment for tonight's meeting, and I think uh, we can address that. Uh, I would recommend that the planning board could approve the application with the following conditions. One, that the landowner provide a copy of the stormwater maintenance log to the town's code enforcement officer on a yearly basis. And two, that the applicant provide a bond, letter of credit, or other form of surety to the town's planning department to, um, um, to the start for the start of construction. The value of the bond shall be equal to the cost of the stormwater system and stabilization of the project if it is not completed. Once the project is completed according to the design, the surety will be returned to the applicant. Mr. Chairman? All right, Jeff. Yep, okay, I'm ready to go. So um, what I wanna do is kind of hammer out a couple of the things that Lee J brought and then also talk about what the abutters comments were uh, before, and then we can get into it. And, um, and then I'll, if you don't mind, I might take over the screen and show you some of the plans. Um, the stormwater maintenance report and plan that we did was submitted um, to the DEP as part of that PBR process. Um, it was also submitted in our application to the town with our stormwater calculations. And the um, owners have no issues with making sure that the maintenance log is, is taken care of that indicates, you know, the site cleaning, the stormwater provisions there. Um, it's my also, uh, one of the questions that came up with the abutter uh, was the road condition of Cemetery Road. And it's my understanding that, that within the next two years, that uh, road is gonna be under um, provisions to have maintenance done on that. Um, the overflow parking, uh, what we've looked at there is we, we feel that we have enough um, parking on site for the, um, for I'll call it 99% of the services that will happen out there. Um, you know, the chapel, even though it, the, the building is at you know, 6,000 square feet, not all of that is open to public space and public area for, um, for viewing rooms and, and areas for, for people to co congregate there. Um, if the, in the event that there is a very large uh, sis, uh, service that's needed, typically they move it to a different location or they can work with um, parking across the street in the cemetery and have their own staff assist with people getting across the street and making those arrangements. So I think parking on site is, is, is more than adequate for what we show on the site plan here. And then the last question about uh, septic system and, and how that goes. Um, typically, uh, or, or what we've provided with our submission is that we show that there are test pits that are capable to handle the, the, the septic design and that when we apply for our building permit, and that is when we give the full details with the HHE 200 and, and the design of the septic system that goes into the um, plumbing inspector through the building code office. Um, so I think we've handled those questions that came up during the public hearing there from uh, the abutter, Mr. LaPierre. Um, and then the, the rest of the project, we had the site walk. Um, we laid out, as I mentioned before, the building corners, the areas uh, for site coming in through there. And um, I think that's, uh, that's, I think we've addressed the comments. You know, we'd, we'd like to move forward. They, they would like to start construction, obviously, as soon as possible, and, and the process goes that way. Um, you know, unfortunately, we've got this situation, and we had our last application right before, in the beginning of March, uh, with the application complete, and here we are with uh, this review. Um, I, think, I think that's it, and, and I didn't have any issues. As Lee J mentioned, we're not seeking any waivers 
uh, for any of the uh, zoning ordinances. Um, the one question is that, oh, the other question that came up was, um, are commercial and uh, businesses and uses allowed in the residential zone? And yes, they are. This is in the R2 transitional zone. Uh, the ordinance has a list of allowed uses um, that are, indicate that under certain sizes and certain areas come in front of you folks for the board for a site plan review. And, and that's why we're here for um, this proposed uh, funeral uh, chapel, memorial chapel here on Cemetery Road. All right, Frank, questions? Uh, yes, I have a couple, Dave. Um, I watched the uh, Borough Community TV thing they did on the chapel across the street becoming a historical register or being on the historical register. And it talked about certain covenants that the family that left the land uh, makes a requirement for people that are purchasing uh, plots within there. And it prompted me then to go look at the, the property information that we have. We have a boundary plan that's done by another surveyor that is being referenced by civil consultants. On that boundary plan, there are eight reference plans and there are another seven or eight notes on that. I went to the deed that was provided and in there it says together with and subject to easements, restrictions, reservations, covenants, and conditions and rights of way. This was the deed that I believe Viverland purchased it. I guess what I would like to do on our site plan, at least carry forth in there, any particular covenants or restrictions, those should be noted on the plan. And my thought is, is that if we don't recognize those now, in 10 years from now, somebody comes out of the woodwork and says, hey, they shouldn't have done that because this restriction, that restriction. I guess I'm just using this as a safeguard. So I'm gonna ask the applicant to put on that plan any covenants, restrictions, or whatever. I understand there's a, there's a road easement over the end of the property on one end of it, I believe. So that was my big hang up, was making sure that we weren't approving something that might be subject to other conditions from previous family donations or contributions or whatever uh, for this to be a town cemetery now that they're giving up a piece. Maybe it takes a letter from the cemetery trustees. I don't know. But I guess I just want to safeguard the town against opening itself up to a problem if we approve something that should not have possibly been approved. What was your second question, Frank? The second question, again, follows along with the HHE thing. And I did look at um, in our definitions, and, I, and it's under light industrial, we require any wastewater to be identified with a sick number. That's the standard in industrial category. What I would like to do is when this is approved through DEP, if we could find out if there is a sick number that is associated with funeral homes, and I believe there is, um, then that be part of the approval process so that when they take their wastewater pumpings to a place, we know that we're complying with whatever the pretreatment program and everything else, we're gonna hold them to make sure they, they meet the pretreatment. So it's basically covenants and the sick number is part of the DEP. Those are my two questions and comments. Okay, Jeff, you wanna answer those? Sure, um, as far as the covenants go, if we look at um, one of those is um, down on, the uh, triangular part portion of the property that's not our, ours that gives access to LaPierre down on the boundary plan. And if I can take over the screen, um, I will kind of show that if you don't mind. Um, I'm gonna get to that area. There, there's a covenant for the, P, for the property that we have ours on, but that doesn't restrict any of the usage. The, if you can see my mouse over here on the right hand side, that there is there's a driveway crossing that portion that allows to get to the LaPierre side. That's not even on our property on that edge. Um, our site plans also reference the boundary plan that was created, that was done by post road surveying. So we have that aspect in, um, in already on the site plan. 
Um, I can add another note if needed to the, if the board finds that beneficial on that. Um, we'll take care of that. Um, and then with respect to the septic areas on that, um, the, the last I checked is that there wasn't any uh, special requirements for the funeral homes in the state of Maine for industrial waste on that side. Um, but we'll include that and um, in, submit any kind of information that we get with respect to that with our building permit. I guess on the covenant, the only thing I would say, Jeff, is I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned with whether or not there were any restriction, restrictions on the use of that parcel, meaning it could only be used for plots, it could only be used for service areas, it could only be used for parking. I, I just want to make sure we've got a clean slate on that as far as the uh, authority that the uh, cemetery has to maintain that property that was given to the town. Yeah, I, and I think that, and I don't know about the process because I wasn't part of the sale to the to the Bibbers, but I do know that this went um, all through the cemetery board before the sale, the you know, the this uh, cemetery association before this out parcel was transferred and put up for sale. So I would make an assumption that they looked at, you know, making sure that you know they they weren't going to sell a lot that could only be. Um, cemetery plots or, or things like that but i can get some more information i can talk to jim wright the surveyor and, and get his information and provide that back to james in the town for additional information i mean if, if he does due diligence on the other reference plans those eight reference plans just does a quick scan and sees if there's a paragraph that jumps out that pertains to our because i do think it talks about northeast of the highway and southwest of the highway i think i mean cemetery road so I think if he could just focus his effort on the piece that of, is of concern, then I want to make sure we uh, are, are binding the town into something that by covenant it's not supposed to happen. Cemetery has that survey done too. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, the the cemet the survey was prepared uh, procured by the cemetery association too for this right. generation of the lots. Yeah, and I think it'll be a, just a quick phone call with Jim Wright to verify that if there were any issues with that. My, my, my gut's telling me no, or else they wouldn't uh, be able to sell it off um, like they did. Well, follow that up with a written statement from him saying the fact, what he, whatever his position is, if you would, please. Yep. yep. So I'd like to just follow up as well on the septic system issue. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, what the board is asking for is perfectly fine, just understand that uh, if they didn't need to come in front of the planning board, they would just get their, you know, HHE 200 form filled out and, and approved by, by Jennifer and sent to the state. So, um, you know, having, having some of that information as a safeguard, Frank, is, is fine. It's just that that is a performance code, like a building, building code, which the planning board doesn't have any purview over. And so because it's a performance-based code, it's really the code enforcement officer's authorization and approval um, for that septic system. I'm just saying we have the ability under conditional use to make conditions. So I'm just calling that out as a condition. Oh yeah, no, I don't have a, I, I think that's fine. I'm just suggesting that if it didn't come to you folks, it would never, you guys would never know it. And I, and I don't have a problem making sure that it gets handled and taken care of and is submitted with the building permit process that we have that information and get that information to James as well so that he can then pass it out and, and make con conform and confirm uh, with the board if that is a condition. I guess it's my bodily fluids hang up. Yeah. <laughs> Frank. yeah. Okay, Frank. But yeah, but it's okay. Uh, let's turn it over to Mike. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't, I don't, I think it should be also. Um, Sean? I'm all set with the, uh, the way it is. I don't have any questions on it. And Nicole? I just want to say that um, I think the parking here will be better than it is on Rochester Street right now. Um, and then as far as the zoning, 
being changed to allow businesses, I counted in the land use table, um, which is found on pages 44 through 48 of our land use ordinance, which is available right online. You can just search Google for it and it'll pop up. Um, but there are 41 commercial uses available in the R2 zone. And those were all voted on and approved by the voters of Berwick, have nothing to do with the planning board whatsoever. That's all. Okay, so we've already uh, voted the application complete. We've conducted a site walk. We've conducted a public hearing this evening, uh, um, which we did leave open. Now, here's a question for you, Lee J. If we act on this application tonight, what happens to the public hearing? Well, you would have to, you would have to close the public hearing tonight in order to do that. And I think this, I, I, I mean, I think the sentiment of the board was to keep it open because you were concerned that this process may not um, be allowing everybody to, to be heard as part of the process and you wanted to leave it open right. for one more meeting. So, I mean, I think worst, best case would be you close the public hearing and you vote on the application tonight. Worst case is they wait one more meeting and um, we'll be able to clean the, the findings up and add these other conditions that Frank talked about tonight and, you know, everything is ready to go at the next meeting. And I understand, you know, the applicants desire to get things going, but um, we are in different times. We still are within, say you took March 5th as the day when we voted it complete. We still are within 60 days of that date if we wait another meeting. So You're right. I have no, I have no problem waiting. You're right. You know, uh, Lee J, that's one of those uh, questions that I already know the answer to, and, and I wanted you to <laughs> say the answer because you said it more eloquently than I would be able to. And, wow. you know, Jeff, I know you and the applicant want to get this. I, I know that I know that you want to break ground tomorrow on this, but yeah. we, I, I think that, you know, the board's consensus was wait till the next meeting. We'll, we'll, if we have any additional things that come in, Fine, we'll address those. We'll close the public hearing. We'll act on it. Jeff, you hear me? Yeah, I, you, you cut out just for a second, but yes. Um, I, I, I have to say we're disappointed that we're, that we're not going to get a vote tonight, but um, in that uh, we, you know, in the meantime, we can take care of, I guess, some of the, the Frank's questions too get an issue for that from the from the surveyor in that time hopefully um but uh yep just to let you know that the the owners here are ready to go they their um site work contractors are are scheduled and and r r ready to, to 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 get this construction go underway and get this project built for the town all right, if everybody can bear with me for one second, I need to tell uh, my uh, wife to not be streaming because it's sucking down my bandwidth right now. So. <laughs> I got the same so, problem. I'm that's why I'm having a hard time. So, um, well, just while he's away, I mean, I think that, you know, the other thing, Jeff, is, is I'm sure the, um, the, the, the bibbers can take care of it fairly quick, but um, it's a matter of getting the, the cost estimate and the um, yep. bond you know, set letter of credit, charity or whatever the credit. case with yep. the town. So, yep. you know, not a big deal, but it's another couple of days anyway. When is our next meeting? May 7th. May, May 7th. All right. All right, so that's what we'll do is May 7th, we'll put this back on the agenda. And then James, we've got the public hearing still open. So if anything comes up, just forward us the correspondence. I'll, and we'll plan I'll on doing send new letters to everybody and, and ongoing. I'll be much more clear about um, please get a hold of us ahead of time to participate yeah. um, and probably encourage people to write in um, and try to keep the number of video participants down to a manageable level. And maybe um, yeah. I can, I might be able to work on me myself being the host. So maybe both Terry and I can, can handle entering and exiting. Oh, Learning, learning process, but we'll, we'll make it better. We'll get it better. Anything you get in, James, in writing, you should share with Jeff right off the bat so he could respond to those in writing as well. I mean, I'm, I'm all in, in making sure this thing happens, but I just want to make sure we've get done due diligence with the public. 
All right, Jeff, we'll see you uh, in on uh, May 7th. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thank you. All right. Next. That's much better. Much, much, much better. My bandwidth. Right, we're back. <laughs> Next on the agenda is site plan review. Adult use marijuana cultivation facility, 11 Pond Road, map R70, lot 16. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is CAF Realty of Maine. So while the applicants are coming in, I can answer some of the administrative questions if, if that's okay with you. So what I want you to... Just to clarify, and I noticed this. So if you go to 8.25, adult use in medical marijuana, I think how some, I think how one of the abutters was confused. 8.253 says location, medical marijuana cooperatives and medical marijuana production facilities are allowed in the R3 zone only on properties which have frontage on Route 9 or Route 4. But then if you go to the land use table, it shows all the areas that you could have that. So I think in the future, we take that out of there, that 8253, and then we put a note on the land use table. So for instance, you know, it's it just, you, you actually go down to the note and that's the note that you would see on the land use table. So I think that would, that would clarify that. But could you explain that question that came up from the abutter in that letter? Yeah, it's, it is an awkward, um, it's, it's confusing because it says route nine or four, it should only say R3 on Route 9. Um, and I can go back through the history. And I actually, if the abutters want to reach out, I can go through uh, the history of how, it, how that language got in there. At one point, the language included CI on Route 236, um, Route 9. It, it included different zones. And over the, the, the course of the revisions, CI was taken out. Um, the Route 236 was taken out, and, and I've gone back on this a couple times to review it. And what ended up being voted on, the language is, uh, it, it said it only applies to R3. And that was the context of what, um, you can, if you go back through some of the um, planning board videos, and those are available online, you can see that the context is for R3. So what did they, right. It's very confusing. So what did the town actually vote for the language in the ordinance? Well, I think, I think we're getting, in, I think we're, I think we're going to get in the weeds here if we talk about that right now. Yeah, the language is for R3. It's for, it's for the, the, the frontage requirement is, is only applies to R3. All right, Lee J, do you, what, I'm going to turn it over to Lee J. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the applicant is proposing to construct um, a marijuana grow facility on the subject parcel. The project is proposed to be phased with phase one, including one building and the site improvements as described. The future phases only include uh, the addition of, a, of additional buildings. The facility will um, be accessed via the existing gravel drive that currently services the parcel from Pond Road, as we already know. Gravel driveway will be constructed leading from the existing driveway approximately 450 feet to the northwesterly portion of the parcel. Uh, the facility will be accessed via, uh, excuse me, I've already missed that. The proposed development area will be fenced, screened, landscaped, and include stormwater treatment facilities to treat the runoff from the new impervious surface. The access road crosses a septic system um, easement servicing the abutting property. The staff has not reviewed any information pertaining to the rights associated with the easement. The applicant will need to provide clarification on the future access um, to the easement as well as depth of pipe and how, the, how this impacts travel over the pipe. Certainly the concern there is that the um, pipe can be damaged depending on the amount of traffic going in and out of um, the site. Uh, the subject parcel is located in the rural, um, rural commercial industrial zone. A small triangular area of the southerly corner of the parcel is located in South Berwick. The area in South, in South Berwick is approximately 7,700 square feet and approximately 135 feet of frontage on the Pond Road. The parcel is bordered on the south by Pond Road with approximately 507 feet of frontage in Berwick. 
I'm uh, trying to skim down through here without missing any important parts. Um, uh, phase one, including the construction, includes the construction of a 44 by 80 foot barn with, uh, for the proposed operation. The building will contain an office, restroom, utility area, and growing, harvesting, and processing rooms. Approximately 85% of the building will be used for the growing, harvesting, and processing, and the remainder will be used for the business support and utility. Um, the subsequent phases will include construction of up to three additional barn structures, each being 32 by 80, for a total of 7,680 square feet. The building, um, the total build out will be 11,200 square feet. Uh, they're proposing a total of five full-time employees and approximately eight total employees during harvesting. Uh, there will be a gate installed with an electric code to limit entrance to employees only. An ox box and other access will be provided for the fire department. Five additional parking spaces are proposed for the new facility with, adi with additional gravel parking areas um, during the harvesting time where more temporary employees are needed. Uh, the intent is to construct the large bioretention storm pond to handle the full build out during construction of phase, at phase one. The construction of the small bioretention pond to the east side of the building will be constructed in the future phase when the second building is constructed to handle any additional runoff uh, in that direction. Since the project is proposed to be phased, the applicant should provide additional information as to a proposed schedule for the expansion. The board may also want to condition the application on coming back to the board for additional review as the other buildings are proposed to be constructed. At a minimum, the applicant should be required to provide written notification to the board when the next phases are proposed. Completeness. As Completeness goes for the purposes of moving the application forward. I would suggest that the board can find the application complete. As you know, that does not mean you cannot ask for additional information pertaining to this application. Other issues. As you may recall, during the comment period from the last publicly attended meeting, there were several issues that the board will want to discuss with the applicant and obtain clarification on them. Uh, the abutter indicated indicated the concern with the septic system easement. This needs to be addressed prior to approval. The public, note, the public noted that there was a daycare center being proposed in South Berwick. Staff has contacted South Berwick Code Enforcement who indicated at the time that no application had been submitted for the daycare. If that's the case, the application would be, this application would be in the pipeline prior to the daycare. There is also no clear indication how this is dealt with relevant to it being in two separate towns, but I will talk to Phil Saucier about that. Even though there are standards established, certain setbacks from schools, etc. again, the jurisdiction ends at the town line unless the state says otherwise. Staff has not found anything in the state law to address this, and I will get a interpretation from the town's attorney. In the applicant's submittal, they discussed the exhaust system. However, none of the plans indicated at the time that I looked at them where the filtration system is exhausting, which side of the building in relation to the abutters. I believe they've provided subsequent information since then that they can talk to tonight. The applicant should be aware that they have submitted a photo of the typical building to be constructed on the site. In doing so, the applicant is bound to construct that building in the sense of the same finishes and construction material. Next steps for the board would be to find the application complete if you choose to do that, set the public hearing date and set the site walk, which I think, did you do that site walk tonight or um, you did not? Um, that concludes my memo at this time. Who's representing the applicant or who's speaking on behalf of the applicant? Uh, it'd be me. It's Mike Sievert with MJS Engineering here. Do can I, Dave? Do we have the the uh, butters part of this group? Yes, they are. I don't see them on the screen. I when see I three of them across. there. Okay, just as long as we don't lose the gray bills and whoever they were. I don't know. Before we get to that, Frank, you know, you bring up a good point. I just want to let for the record know, and for our viewers at home, uh, we got two letters in our planning board packet from um, 
Allison and Jerry Graybill, who live at 10 Pond Road. And then we also got another one from Paul and Deborah Amatucci, who live at uh, 12 Perry's Way. So we did get two letters and I, I say finely crafted letters. Thank you very much for sending those in. So go ahead, Mike. Um, so do you want me to um, give a, a presentation or a short presentation as to where we are and what we've yes. recently? Yes. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, we, we got uh, Jay's letter and we have resubmitted um, a set of plans and they included only two sheets that had uh, um, adjustments to them. It was the revised grading plan and the revised landscape plan. Um, and I can either, I don't know if you want me to pull those up uh, or if you've seen them or you have them. Um, I can pull those up on the screen, I think. You, why don't you pull them up on the screen? We have them. Um, we have some of what you're talking about, but for the people who are abutters, they might like to see them. Sure. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So this is the original um, boundary survey and topography that we originally submitted. No changes here. And um, you'll see that the easement, and I, I can come back in a few minutes and talk about that. Um, and this is the site plan. Uh, no changes to this plan at this point. We haven't, um, we didn't really hear anything from the police or fire department yet, so we haven't made any revisions to this. Um, this is the grading plan that we've resubmitted. And um, this is to address uh, mostly the comments at the last meeting um, relative to the um, screening and so forth. Right here along this property line, all the way down past what would potentially be the, the second building, we have um, designed a berm in there. It's approximately four feet high on the average. Um, and it's right inside this uh, setback here and right against the, the uh, side of the building and then kind of ties into the grading here. So that's, um, we had gone from, I think last time we had the, the uh, trees that we had put in out there and we've since brought a landscape architect on and we put the berm in uh, for her to plant. Um, then we had the landscape architect um, relook at all this and put in all of this landscaping down the berm, at least just past the end of what would be the first building now. And we would of course continue this at a later phase if that happened. Um, I believe there's a list of all these plants. Um, they're a mix of uh, evergreen uh, junipers and shrubs and so forth. At planting, they would be anywhere from about two and a half feet to um, about seven feet tall, six to seven feet tall. And they will grow uh, upwards of 10, 10 or so feet tall, 10, 11 feet. And the reason for this and the berm and to try to keep it only at about 14 or 15 feet is that's around the eave height and we plan to put uh, solar panels on the south side of this building. We didn't want the taller trees to come up and, and block that. Um, and then this is uh, um, some renderings that the landscape architect did for us. We had put together um, a rendering I think I showed last time to try to show um, a better proportion of the size of the building rather than the picture that I had submitted. So this is that same building that I had showed last time, but now we've put in the berm right here. And then these are the trees. This is the view at grade standing uh, uh, over by the, the uh, abutters house. And this would be the view if you were standing up on the deck. So elevated up a little bit higher. So um, so that shows what changes we've made to date to address um, address that information. Um, it, just a quick, I can quickly go over the the sewer easement. Um, so it's a it's a septic system easement, and I, I saw in the letter uh, just this evening uh, the letter that uh, James sent to us and the um, concern about the easement. I think there's a little bit of misrepresentation in that easement uh, or that letter, but 
we're not crossing the leach field. So the, the current leach field is right here. And you'll note that the current leach field is not within the current easement. Um, the easement is this, this uh, angled leg right here for sewer pipes, and then this for a, the, the septic leach field easement. Um, the problem here is there was a, a, a lot line revision done, and, and this, there's two plans recorded at the registry, and the surveyor that went in and did this survey notes that this is the easement that is recorded in the deed, um, and the other easement, which does follow this sewer line right here, this force main, which goes up to here, there is another easement that's on the very first subdivision plan in November of 2006 that actually um, is a whatever, I don't remember the width of this easement, but about 20 feet. And it does follow that. And then this septic easement is, is mirrored uh, 180 degrees and actually goes around this. The problem is the surveyor showed this because that's what is recorded in the current deed. So there's a, it, it's just an error, a Scribner's error or an error when the new deed came. Um, this could be fixed with a, um, you know, a corrective deed and we could flop this back over in the event that that's, um, you know, probably should be done. But right now the septic system is not on an easement. It's on my client's property and this pipe is not really on an easement except for that little piece right there. It's, it's going across my client's property. Um, we are only crossing the force main. Um, and I know that um, you all know that sewer pipes are under roads in, in every town and so forth. So um, it's, it's typically not a problem. In this situation where it's probably not as deep as a municipal sewer system, this note right here, specifically calls out what we were gonna do. And we're gonna dig that and we would put this in a sleeve and then I've got it set up to be uh, insulated um, for frost protection and, and so on and so forth. So we're going to take this into account so that uh, vehicle traffic going across this pipe would be dealt with. It would be adequately buried. It would be in a sleeve so that it could be maintained later on without digging the road up and it would be protected from frost. And that, that's all on the plan. Um, and again, that, that letter, um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it, it really referenced mostly that you shouldn't drive over a leach field. And, and, and of course we agree with that 100%, and we're not driving over the leach field, we're driving you know, down here. Can you go um, back to those renderings of what the building's supposed to look like and also the landscaping? All right, so if you're submitting these, if you're submitting these as, as part of the official application, yeah. and if this application gets approved, this is exactly what it has to look like. That's right, yep. And we have a, there's a plant, there should be a plant list on this plan right there. So each plant is specified um, and it's all detailed out on the number of plants and everything. Can you talk about the exhaust? Um, from what I know about the exhaust, there's, it was written and submitted as a, um, as a um, filtration system using the carbon filtration. And um, again, the, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I can't remember if I submitted the floor plan or not, but there, I'm pretty sure I did in the original submission. And so, like I had said, this area right here is, is the offices and utilities and the the, um, the processing room or the final uh, processing rooms are over here in this area. So that would be where the filtration system was there. And so if there's any exhaust at all after carbon filtration, it would be exhausted out on this northerly side. And I can add any of that detail uh, to, the, to the floor plans and, and pick it up on a site plan also. Oh. Mike, I want to be clear, excuse me for interrupting, but uh, there is no exhaust to the atmosphere with this system. They pump carbon dioxide into the plants and they do not mix that with any type of air. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, and I think, uh, I mean, that's all I have for the, um, 
that is all I have for what we've submitted and, and the information that we've uh, provided on here. Okay, I that do. sounds good. Sean, let's open it up to you. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Sean Winston, do you have anything? Yeah, no, I was just trying to unmute my uh, my computer. No, I don't. I don't have any questions right now. Um, just a couple of things to discuss about our ordinances later on. Okay, Nicole. I don't have any questions. No, I have concerns, but they're not applicant concerns. Um, Mike. No, I'm good. I think I think uh, with the carbon filtration system inside it should prevent a lot of the smell mm -hmm. and like how the owner said the um if there's no exhaust it's a closed closed loop system and it should prevent a lot of smells from exiting that building and frank uh yeah maybe a couple here um on that sewer easement I, i'm also just because you've got a sleeve in the future you're going to put a sleeve and protection this that and the other I'd like to make sure that that easement is worded that allows those people to actually dig your road up and make a repair should something be a catastrophic failure in there. Okay, um, just to make sure the wording is proper. Sure. I'm a little concerned now that you've put the berm up that, um, and I want the fire chief to, to make sure he sees this new plan with the berm because access around all four buildings in the future may be of importance to him. Yeah. I don't know if he'd want to go down through the middle of four buildings burning like a gauntlet. You know what I'm saying? So the point would be is I'm going to weigh heavily on or rely heavily on the chief to weigh in on access around it now that you're proposing that berm. I think the berm was needed. Yeah. I think to properly screen, I, I did see the, the taping of that site walk um, and it was wide open. I didn't realize it was a field. I mean, that's really where these people are, are sitting, looking at this proposed opportunity going in. And then the last thing would be is that, I think the fact that the abutters have made the effort to write these letters, I'm not gonna take any position on this application until I actually see a written response to each one of those letters by, by each question they have asked. And as I also understand, I think Lee Jay is gonna be asking the town attorney to look at a couple of the things that were proposed since the Grables made reference to they had legal counsel look at it. So I yield to uh, when uh, Lee Jay gets back with okay. that input. Thank you, Frank. That's all I have, Dave. Yep, thank you, Frank. Um, do you have a letter from the uh, fire chief and the police chief yet? We don't, no. Okay. Um, I don't think that we're going to act. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll get the consensus of the uh, board, but we're not going to act on this application tonight. Um, we could find it complete as if the board wants to, but that's as far as we're going to go. Okay. Um, but I think this is going to be something that is going to generate a lot of interest in having a site walk. Okay. And I think for the first time ever, since I've been on the board, we can actually have two site walks in order to keep the amount of people down and we can keep them open a little bit longer so people can stop in for a little bit longer. It's going to be more of a stretch for for James, it's gonna be a little bit more stretch for the applicant, um, but I'm gonna open it up to the board. Do we, you know, if, if anybody wants to find this application complete or we can just continue this application uh, to the, uh, the May 7th meeting, because I think at this point, there's a lot of uh, things that are, questions that aren't answered yet, and especially things that have come up from abutters. And I, I can't find this application complete myself, but, you know, we can, we can, if somebody wants to make a motion in a second, we can definitely vote on this. Dave, the only thing I would, that was the note from those March 5th minutes that we were asking to be corrected or the text added. And I believe that that March 5th, what that was Mike LaRue's motion was to determine that the application was complete. And, and I think we voted 5-0, so I think- I'm sorry, you're absolutely right, Frank. These we are all- did that. Yeah, working so from I, home. That's I why we had a- no action, I see no action here tonight. That's why we had a public hearing because the application was complete. Otherwise we wouldn't act, otherwise we wouldn't schedule a public hearing. So Correct. I apologize for that. Um, so I see no action tonight. What I, what I think that we should do is, I think that we should do a site walk on Wednesday, May 5th, let's say, 
you know, at five o'clock and then Thursday, May 7th is the next meeting. If the applicant can get everything in and answer all these questions um, on Wednesday, May, uh, or Thursday, May 7th at five o'clock, another public, uh, another site walk that's open to the public. So it, can I just clarify, are you saying that a, a site walk on May 5th for planning board members only? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. No. no, the reason that we normally have one uh, site walk, but we, we have to, you know, keep things under 10 people. So yeah, give fine. people the opportunity to uh, choose either one. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. And if you show up at five o'clock and there's 10 people there and somebody shoes you away, you come back at 530 or six o'clock. What, do you, what does the board think about that? I think that's fine. I agree with it. But I think that's fine too. I'm okay with it. The only other thing I would offer up would be is if the gray bills did get legal counsel to review it and they're willing to share that letter with us as part of this ongoing review of their letters and stuff, uh, I, I'd ask them to do that. Maybe, okay. maybe they don't want to, but if they would, that would be grateful. All right. So for whoever's on the Zoom call now from uh, all the abutters and people watching at home, we're going to be doing a site walk on Wednesday, May 5th, starting at 5 o'clock. We also have another one. I'm sorry, that's Tuesday, May 5th. We also have another one on uh, Thursday, May 7th at 5 o'clock. So you have two opportunities to, uh, you know, go to the meeting. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Good night. All right. Can we have our screen back? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I don't know how to do that either. So. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, good night. All right. Good night. All right, so Roger and Jerry's iPad, you heard, and, and David Ayer, so you guys all heard. So anyway, all right. Next up is uh, new business, subdivision amendment, 569 Portland Street map, R72 lot 9. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant is root for self storage and HP cycles. I'll turn it over to uh, James. You want to go? Sure, I'll take this turn. Um, so this has been a, a lot an area that has been subdivided and resubdivided. Um, Neil, Neil can fill fill in on the on the details. Um, I just read my memo. Uh, root four self storage LLC and HP cycles. They are both the applicants and they are requesting approval for a minor subdivision and a lot line adjustment to a previously approved subdivision plan. In May of 2018, um, HP Cycles was in front of the board and they had a subdivision approved with a lot line adjustment and the merger of one lot. So it went from three lots to two. Today, the applicant re requests there are lot line adjustments and the creation of one lot for three lots total, making it a minor subdivision. So the primary reason for the lot line adjustments is the storage facility was built encroaching upon the setback line. Um, so the, um, the plan, which I'll have Neil, Neil bring up and he can cover, um, one lot will then be created, which will get frontage off of Coffin Lane, also known as Randall Road. Okay, Neil, turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, my name is Neil Raposin with Civil Consultants uh, here on behalf of uh, Root4 or Root4 Self Storage LLC and HP Cycles. Um, and as James uh, outlined, this is uh, mostly to correct uh, some encumbrances that were put onto these lots when they were uh, built up over the years, and with the last uh, with the last lot split. It's trying to clean a lot of that up, and we're also we're creating that that uh, going back to three lots instead of the two lots that were created um, for for the purchase of that back lot by a separate entity. So uh, I don't know if you can pull up that subdivision plan. It's probably the easiest way to 
to look that up. I can try and share mine. I have it up on the other screen here. Yeah, it's probably just easier for you to do yep. it and you can poke around on it and zoom in. Okay. So here we have the, this is the proposed subdivision. Uh, let me, can you see that one? Yep, we can see it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the, the approved, uh, the previously approved subdivision amendment here. And that's created this, uh, created this arrangement where we have uh, this one large lot where the back lot was merged uh, with this front lot here. And that was the HP cycles lot that went all the way around. And then these two lots were merged uh, to create the lot that's currently that um, route for self storage with the with the outdoor storage and the vehicular storage over on this piece. Um, when this was built, uh, this lot split came across um, a portion of a portion of the driveway that went out to HP cycles here, uh, which created uh, an easement and an encumbrance onto this lot for access out to that, uh, out to the back of the garage here. Uh, and as well as they built out this storage uh, facility, one of the buildings uh, encroached on uh, the building setback on this lot line here. So what we've done with that, we can get this to go. Is we have uh, adjusted this, this lot line kind of zigzag here. This portion is that portion of the lot that needed the easement uh, to access to get onto the back of the garage there. And we just swapped out that, that triangle uh, to gain uh, this land back here so that these buildings wouldn't be encroaching on the setback. And then this, this bump out here was to take that last building that was constructed out here out of the setback uh, for this lot. And this, uh, this jog we put in back here is, um, I don't have the aerial photos available right here, but the back, of this, the back of this development went right up to this lot line. And if in the future, uh, these, we're contemplating expanding this storage out onto this side of this lot. And to do that, we'd have to go to DEP and get everything uh, treated as best we can. So we wanted to make sure we had access on this lot to get some kind of stormwater treatment back here. Uh, as needed to get anything in the future approved. Just didn't want to back us into a corner, so we had to do this whole thing over again. Um, then we have this remaining lot, which is um, basically a, a smaller version of, of the back lot that had been there uh, two, I think two versions of the subdivision ago. And this one, I mean, so it looks complicated, but it's just trying to kind of trying to work all the, uh, the property lines back into conformance with what was, what was put out there. Okay. Um, does anybody see a need to, I mean, we have to actually vote on the uh, application completeness, but like a site walk, this is just a lot line adjustment pretty much, right? No. It's more than that, isn't it, Neil? It's to create it's a building lot in the back that would take access up a 25 foot right away. Am I correct? It, it would if we can do that. Yep. So it's not. I, 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 go ahead, Frank. I mean, if, if they were just trying to, you know, deal with setbacks, this, that, and the other, they could have done it by affidavit and everybody signed it and recorded it. But this is truly trying to put that third lot back in there and it becomes landlocked unless it gets access off of Randall Road, which I'm assuming is a private road. Uh, it's, it's not built to any standard. Um, it could potentially have other lots on it from Triberwick Realty and the Lowry family. I just think this whole thing doesn't have the right aura about it in my mind. So, that's Well, when I, when I first saw it, I was not part of this review and I apologize, but when I first saw this, I guess my thing that came to my mind, Neil, while you were talking was, why is that a second lot if it's part of HP cycle? Why isn't that just one large lot? It's, so you'd only have two, so you'd only have two lots. You'd have the HP cycle property, and then you'd have the storage property. That this lot uh, eventually, we'd like that to be conveyed. Conveyed to who? 
it's it would uh, we're still we're still it's still not finalized through here, uh, but it's basically it would be this same entity would be owning these two lots. Then by our definition, it becomes one lot, doesn't it? That right, and that's it why would. I'm. But it's it would, not but it, split. It's, but it's not. It's not. It's not in the same in the same uh, entity at the moment. That's all. Yeah, but you just said you were going to put it in the same entity. I guess I'm ha I'm a little fuzzy with this whole thing. Well, this one basically we'd like to keep this one, you know, available to either party here, uh, and access off of this. Uh, this does have an easement to to access off of uh, off of Randall Road through here, but we didn't want to lock this into either one. At this point, we just wanted to clear up what we had to down here. And then if this lot, because there's been, there's been talk about getting this lot into a, into a separate ownership to possibly do something out here. We don't have, we don't have uh, you know, a clear direction on that at this time. I could continue, but I'll let somebody else weigh in please. Nicole? I'm just reviewing the, the plan right now, but I understand what Frank is concerned about. And yeah, it makes sense if, if you're just gonna combine the two anyway, you could do that without coming here and doing a subdivision. Right, but I do think they, I think he wants to keep that available as, as a separate lot. So that's, that's kind of why we, why we did come through and, and try to get, try to come through and get it approved as a subdivision, as a minor subdivision. So that makes a third lot on a, on a non-town road, on a private road, um, which we can't do, can we? No. Without upgrading the road? Right. My understanding is that pertains to dwelling units? It pertains to a lot. Yeah, it was, that was, it was my interpretation that it was, just the residential dwelling units as well, but. I mean, right now you could deal with all the fancy work around the back corner of that, eliminate that line that's, uh, what is it? South 22, 53, 44 East, eliminate that line and you can do that by affidavit or lot, simple lot line adjustment. And let's wait until uh, the applicant fully well understands what he wants to do back there. Because in, in my view, we're creating a landlocked piece of land. So even though it has a it has a corridor to it, essentially it could end up being a landlocked piece of land. So your definition of frontage is the dimension between two side lot two side lines of a lot measured along the property line that borders upon whatever way serves as legal access to the lot. The following ways shall constitute legal access to a lot. A, a way accepted by or established as belonging to the town, the county, or the state. B, a way shown on an approved subdivision plan. Or C, an unaccepted street existing prior to the original enactment of the town's subdivision regulations, provided it is shown on a plat recorded in the Registry of Deeds prior to such enactment and is deemed adequate as a street by the planning board as evidenced by its endorsement on the subdivision plan. Where a lot is situated on a curve or a street, it goes on, but it, that doesn't really pertain. Um, so you have A, B, or C choices for what constitutes frontage. What is Randall Road? Randall Road was the road that continued all the way through into North Berwick uh, prior to uh, prior to the railroad coming through here. Is it an accepted road or is it a discontinued road? You're going to need to do some title research yeah. on that to find out what the county may have done with the road. Exactly. That's where I'm going with it, Lee J. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to get more information on what they deemed that road to be. I know there has been, I know there has been building out there since, since we even started this process, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly how to, how to respond to that one. 
So anybody else from the board have any questions? No. All right, how would the board like to act? I would just put him on the next agenda when he's ready to come in. Okay, Neil, does that work for you on May 7th? That will, that will have to work, yep. Say that again, I'm sorry. Yep, I think we can make that work. Okay, all right, thank you, Neil. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Do we have back our screen? There we go. How many people are on this now? We, we got Tana Herget. No. All right, next on the agenda is a uh, public comment. Did you get any uh, emails tonight, James? Nope, no. Um... No additional emails. All right, perfect. Okay, anything that the board would like to share with the public or other members of the board? I hope you guys keep me around a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> You're an integral part of this board, Frank. I agree. Mr. Paul will be happy. Yeah, this was a very challenging meeting, so. Mm. Dave, did you want to, um, do we want to dive into that zoning question or are we going to put that to another time? Bring it up. Well, I was just, I was looking at that because originally when the Pond Road application came in, I had asked the, basically the same question that the a butter had. I had asked James that same question um, regarding the, the zoning and the frontage. And I, I recall, it, you, you know, we had put that in from what I can remember to keep, you know, to make sure businesses were along the main roads. Um, and I know it says R3 and then, but I think we overlooked that, you know, route four is in the RCI. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think that was the original intent was to have the businesses along the two main roads. And I think if we take that language out, the frontage, there's nothing in the land use table that says the business has to be on road frontage of Route 9 or Route 4. Right, right. So we'd end up eliminating that requirement, which where I think we should just, we should add in to, um, you know, the 8.25.3, that it should be R3 and RCI with frontage on Route 9 and Route 4. Right, now, it's either that or put a note, you know, that put a note on the land use table. It's the same thing that I was thinking. But you can you can add to it, we can add to that A258. And, you know, I think that's probably the best thing to do. And they can even put a note on the land use table as well. Yeah. So that, was, that was all I had. Subject to a town meeting vote, though, we just can't arbitrarily add a note or no, 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 Frank. Or add yeah. Words. yeah. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. No. All right. We're just going to make up our own rules, Frank. <laughs> monarchy. We're going to have a monarchy. <laughs> put it in the land use ordinance. It's fine. I'll, anybody else I'll take out my else? red pen and I'll put it right in there. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to get Nicole's approval. She's our land ordinance wizard, so. <laughs> I, I, I agree tonight was challenging and I just appreciate all of you putting in the effort and um, I think tonight will be the hardest that it gets and um, we'll just keep communicating and trying to make it um, fair and, and easy and keep working at it. You know we can bring every application that comes before it comes into your office we can bring it to public hearing ready and handle it one by one we, we still have the ability to do that. Right. I mean, once we get to complete application, I mean, it's it's all subject to the applicant responding to comments and questions that determines how fast we get through it. But this board has historically been very responsive to getting things done. I mean, I wouldn't be worried about a backlog or anything like that. That doesn't scare me at all. But the point is, is that we have, this board has always been very, performed very well and timely. 
And uh, so we can get every application to completion and then we can sit there and see what the governor says about public gatherings and this, that, and the other. So that's my two cents again. I'm up to a buck now tonight. Right. <laughs> well, there, you know, there's a couple of different things. There, there, there's a couple of different things. I mean, I think, as I mentioned early on, um, but for the fact that this, that one application was, you know, fairly contentious and a lot of interest from a lot of people. Yeah. I think you guys can keep a process going through this process. We don't know when this is going to end. We don't know, you know, what the governor is going to do by May 15th. Um, this may go for a couple more months or it may not. The other side of it is though, I mean, it's, it's harder. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that there may be a way for the board to have the six feet in between each board member in that room and only let people in to speak for the public hearing. Point. Let me bring that up, Lee J. I brought that up with uh, Terry. Right now, Question, we don't have you know, the, tech the, the technology yep. to make that happen. Well, you could move it to the auditorium upstairs. I mean, there, there's, there's I, I think I be ways that you can actually down. have Can you hear me, Lee J? Yes. Yes. We, okay. I'm sorry. She doesn't have the capability to go back and forth between the live camera in the meeting room and oh. then the Zoom. Right no, now. no, no. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting rather than Zoom, just being able to adjust the, the meeting room to actually have a meeting and then control the amount of people that come in at a time to speak at a public hearing. And, and separate James you folks enough. I'm sorry? James could be the bouncer? Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. Record, but they record presentations in the auditorium all the time. I mean, basically, I think that's what you're talking about, Lee J, to get proper spacing up from everybody. That's certainly yep, another no, option to look at. All right, let's do that over the next two weeks. Let's look at that. So keep going. Thank you, guys. James? Yeah. All right. Does anybody else? Does anyone have anything else? I just nope. vote to keep Dave as chair. <laughs> I was about to. I was about to shut my computer down tonight. I could. I could read it on your face. Come on, Dave. Stick with us. Stick with us. <laughs> I almost had a meltdown. So, all right. Without saying anything else. Without saying anything else. Does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, we're moving on next to the agenda is the adjournment. Mike? I move that we adjourn the April 16th uh, planning board meeting. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Mike and then seconded by Sean. All in favor? Aye.